Here we're going to look at using interpolation to get values in the steam tables when the steam tables are not detailed enough to list the values that we're interested in. So in this case we have water at 220 degrees centigrade, 0 0.01 megapascals, and we want to know what's the enthalpy. So if we go to the steam tables, look up the saturation temperature at this pressure, it's only 45.8 degrees centigrade, which means that this temperature were well above saturation, so what we have is superheated steam. And so now we can go to the superheated steam tables and we can look up values, but the tables I'm going to use, and these are from Elliott and Lyra, the thermodynamics textbook, but you can find steam tables in a number of locations, don't list values at 220 degrees C. What I can find is at 200 degrees C and at 250 degrees C I can find the enthalpy at a pressure of 0 0.01 megapascals. So let me write those values down. However, I want a value at 220 degrees C, so let me call that just H for now, and I'm going to get that by interpolating, what I'm going to say is the enthalpy at 220 is equal to the enthalpy at 200, which is 2879.6, plus the fraction of the temperature difference corresponds to the fraction of the enthalpy difference. In other words, 220 minus 200 over 250 minus 200. And if I multiply that by the enthalpy difference in that range, and I'll do the calculation, enthalpy is 2918.7. We can't really justify that many significant figures, so I'm going to write as 2920 kilojoules per kilogram that we get by interpolation. Now I'm going to do a similar problem. The difference here is I want enthalpy at a higher pressure. We're still in the superheated region of the steam table, but this pressure is also not listed in the steam tables. I'm going to use the data and the calculations from part one, so let me list them first. So I've listed the values that calculated and what we looked up in the previous, and then we don't have values at 0 0.02 megapascals in the table. Well, we have them at 0 0.05 megapascals. So let me write those values down. So what we're going to do is first calculate H2 by interpolation, doing the exact same procedure we did in the first problem. And then we're going to interpolate in pressure to get H3. So H2, I'm going to sh just write the numbers down and not discuss them since it's identical to what we just finished doing. I know with a value of 2917.1. And so now I can interpolate between this value and this value. Of course, it's not a very strong dependence on pressure for a gas at low pressure, but We'll do the calculation just to demonstrate the idea when we have to do these multiple interpolations. So what we're going to do is calculate H3 as being the value at 220 and the lower pressure, plus again the difference, 0 0.02, but now in pressure, so the range that we have values, and the difference in enthalpy, and I'll do the math for this calculation. And so we now have the value for H3. Now in terms of significant figures, it's essentially, we're going to say it's the same number because that weak dependence on pressure and we don't have accurate enough values. So in three significant figures, 2920 kilojoules per kilogram at this higher pressure.